<laughs> it's Chiefs Week. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got a made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what YouTube what I mean. team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we're here to do a preview of the game between the Ravens and the Chiefs coming up on Sunday Night Football. Now, these teams are both coming off a crazy, intense, down to the wire. As a matter of fact, the Ravens game went past the wire. But both of these teams are coming off some just wild games uh, from last week. Of course, the Chiefs, they went up against the Browns, and the Browns jumped out to a big lead on them. Uh, but the Chiefs were like, oh, we ain't worried about that, and they came right back. And the Ravens, they also jumped out to a, a decent lead on the Raiders, but the Raiders said, we ain't worried about that. They came right back. Now, the only difference is the Chiefs, they came back and won. Uh, the Ravens, they jumped out to a lead and lost. Um, so they definitely went different directions last week, but last week was last week. Um, now, in this game, you know what, before we get into it, shout out to y'all. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you for showing extra support to the channel. Uh, if you want to be a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. If you don't want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, don't go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Uh, but no, I seriously appreciate y'all and what you all do for the channel because it helps out a whole lot. More than you think. Trust me, more than you think. Um... And I just appreciate everybody that supports the channel, that watches the videos, that tells their friends, families about the videos, because it, it is a lot of work. It's a whole lot of work that goes into it. And I appreciate the fact that y'all support every single day. Um, a lot of people for, who are not even fans of the Ravens, they come through and they show support. And I appreciate it a lot. So, so thank you all, whether you're a patron or not. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we got a uh, whew, we got a tough game this week. Ravens got a very tough game against a very tough opponent and an opponent who has had their number. Uh, of course, Ravens, they are 0-3 under Lamar and under Patrick Mahomes. The Ravens are 0-3 against the Kansas City Chiefs. And like we've mentioned a lot of times, every single time we play them, the loss margin gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, first, it was the overtime loss back in 2018 season or 20, yeah, 2018 season, uh, Lamar's rookie year where they lost uh, that field goal at the end of the game. Uh, and then um, the next year, it was the where the Ravens, they ended up losing by one score with Shady McCoy. He caught that misdirection screen because Ravens, they had a chance to get a game-winning drive at the end of the game, but they could not stop that screen. And, you know, screens have been killers to the Ravens for years. Um, and then it was last year on Monday Night Football at M&T Bank Stadium, uh, and the Chiefs, they came in there and they ran the show like they were at home. Um, and the Ravens, I think, they lost by multiple scores that night. Uh, so the Chiefs are definitely, um, they got the Ravens number big time. Now, something that, where, where it all starts at for me, where I think it starts at, where it has to improve, would be coaching. And with coaching, you, you, you cannot come out and play scared. You come, cannot come out and play intimidated. And I feel that's what happens with the Ravens and their coaching staff whenever they play the Chiefs. I feel like there's that intimidation factor. There's that, that, that teacher to student factor where the student is just trying all these different ways to try to prove to the teacher that, hey, I know how to do this better than you do. And I could even do it your way and beat you with your own style. But it just, it, it doesn't work like that. And what I mean when I say that is, Andy Reid being a teacher and John Harbaugh being a student because Andy Reid, John Harbaugh came from Andy Reid's coaching tree, as we all know. Now, with John Harbaugh, it's like we, somebody got to send a message to him like, look, Harbaugh, you ain't got to prove nothing to Andy Reid, man. You ain't got to prove nothing to him. Be you won a Super Bowl before he did. And you came from his coaching tree and you won a Super Bowl way before he did. You ain't got nothing to prove. Just go out there and do your thing. Play your game. Have your guys play their game. Because that whole, the, the mental part, the, the intimidation part, it seems like it, it trickles down to the players too. So it, it starts at the top with coaching. They cannot be intimidated of the Chiefs. Now, as far as offensive coordinator, Greg Ron, it, it, it's, it's all the same thing. Call a good game. Let, if guys are hot, let them keep going. Let them stay hot. Last year when we played the Chiefs on Monday Night Football, the run game was working wonderfully, and then the, the Ravens threw it out the window. 
threw it out the window. Now, um, with Tyson Williams, something that I had been concerned about, like, why did he get seven carries in the first half, look good, but in the second half, he only got two. And Ravens had a lead on top of that. But I know a lot of y'all, shout out to Team Keep It Clean, y'all brought it to my attention that with the handoffs, they weren't smooth handoffs. They were, they were getting a little shaky. So I guess maybe Ravens didn't want to risk it. Also, in pass protection, he, he didn't look so good in pass protection last week. Uh, and, and, of course, in overtime, um, it was him missing on the block uh, to where Lamar Jackson ended up getting hit uh, from behind and fumbling that ball. Uh, so it was just, it was a, a definitely a, a roller coaster of emotions, a roller coaster of just everything uh, in that game from last week. Um, we saw we saw some good, we saw some bad, and we saw everything in between. But with Tyson Williams, I just, I want him to get another shot. It, it seems as if the Ravens are going into the direction of uh, Latavius Murray being that guy. And of course, we expect him to call up Le'Veon Bell any day now. Maybe even by the time you see this video, they will have called him up. We'll see. Um, but I just, it, it, it seems as if that they, they're going to go in a different direction for Tyson Williams, and he won't end up being the starter uh, for very long. Um, because, again, Ravens, they seem like they feel more comfortable with other options. Um, and Tyson, he gives you just that burst, man. He, his, his burst is going to be better than a Le'Veon Bell. His burst is going to be better than a Latavius Murray. Um, and Trenton Kenny, he brought that burst too, but they cut him. So I, I still don't understand that move. I still don't understand that. Why? I know somebody mentioned in the comment section. Well, maybe with um, with Tyson Williams possibly getting ready to be demoted, he'll be that special teams guy for the Ravens. Um, and I just that burst is important, man. Uh, but we'll see how it all goes down, because I know with Latavius Murray and Le'Veon Bell, they are better at pass protection. Uh, right now than Tyson Williams is at this point in his career. So we'll have to see how everything unfolds now. The offensive line, which was all kinds of terrible last week. Uh, they said that when we watched the Super Bowl last year where Patrick Mahomes had absolutely no time to throw the ball against the Bucs, uh, his offensive line was in shambles. He, it got beat up, just abused. He got beat up, abused. It was a terrible game from Patrick Mahomes and their offensive line. Terrible game. But they said that Lamar Jackson... The percentage that he was uh, that he was under pressure on his dropbacks was actually a higher percentage than Patrick Mahomes was in the Super Bowl, and I, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Uh, but offensive line has got to be much better than what they were last week, because if the offensive line is like that against these Chiefs, this is going to be a disgusting game. It's going to be a disgusting game. Ronnie Stanley last week had a bad game. Alejandro Villanueva last week had a bad game. The, the, the offensive line. They, and, and shout out to Crosby. Shout out to Ngakwe. Even the Sieb, he got a piece of the pie too. But um, offensive line, that what we saw against the Raiders, they can't bring that uh, against the Chiefs. They, they just, they can't. Chiefs are going to have a lot more confidence. They should be getting the Honey Badger back this week. Um, so that's that's huge for them. Um, but our offense, man, I just I, I want our offense to just come out strong and don't come out scared. You saw what the Browns did last week. They came out running that ball, that run game, set up the play action game. And they they were on the Chiefs head, man. They were on the Chiefs head. But you also saw how those mistakes you may not make many mistakes, but any mistake you make against the Chiefs is going to be blown up that much more it, it just it makes it that much bigger because a team like this like the Chiefs especially one that could flip field position like that they could score like that they could just come back like that or they could just extend the lead like that because you know they always looking for that big play. like always one thing I love about Patrick Mahomes game love it this guy snapped the ball set and he'll be looking there could be a guy right in front of him for an easy two-yard completion, maybe four-yard completion, but he's looking past that. He's looking past that. He's looking for a big play downfield. And I know Lamar Jackson does a lot of the same thing, too. There could be something easy right in front of him, but he'll be looking to really make that strike. But with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, you know, him and Tyreek Hill, they're always looking to make some noise happen. But real quick, back to our offense. Run that ball. Run the ball. And run the ball effectively. A big thing in this game is going to be adjustments. It was so frustrating last week 
watching the lack of adjustments and, and, and the lack of making up for, of compensating for a bad offensive line. Where were the screenplay to, to the running backs? Because you know that Raiders were coming in. They were coming in. And a, a nice counter, a nice way to slow that defense down from coming in would be to catch him with a screenplay to the running backs. Ravens, they did none of that. They had no, no parts of that at all. And it was just, it was frustrating to see. And I just, I, I really hope this week is better. Is my confidence at an all-time high that this week will be better? No, not at all. Not at all. But I, I certainly hope that these Ravens will prove me and, and really a lot of us wrong. Uh, Mark Andrews. Gots to show up, man. Now, while last week was not a big game, it was a big moment. And you, you can't let that stuff happen, man. You get paid big money to make big plays in these big moments. You got to, got to show up, man. Got to show up. Had a super quiet game last week. Um, Sue was like super, super quiet. I think he had like three catches for, for 30, 30 yards or something like that. Super quiet game. And can't afford that this week. Ravens can't afford that this week. And one thing that they need to, they need to take a page out of the Raiders playbook. Darren Waller, no, he's a monster tight end. Darren Waller is a phenomenal tight end. Did Ravens know he was a phenomenal tight end going into the game? Yes. Did he still go off against the Ravens in that game? Yes. They still found ways to get him involved, despite the Ravens knowing, oh, this is their best offensive player. They still found ways to get him involved. Ravens need to take a page out of the Raiders playbook. Do the same thing with Mark Andrews. It's a, this is a, this is a, it's a big game. It's a big game. Because the implications that it has in the long run are big. While this, even if, despite how this game goes, the season is not over. If the Ravens win, the season is not over. If the Ravens lose, the season is not over. But still, in the long run, this game it, it counts a little bit more than some other games do. Especially because you're going up against an AFC opponent. So, this is going to be something. Now, uh, wide receivers. I will say, just keep doing what you do. Hollywood had a good game last week. Sammy Watkins, despite having a couple drops, clean that up. But he had a good game last week, too. And you know he's going to be extra motivated this week. For some strange reason. I don't know why. But you know Sammy Watkins is going to be. He's he going to be ready. He's going to be ready. Now, um... I would hope that the Ravens could diversify the offense just a little bit more, uh, get, the, get, get some other guys involved, like a Devin DuVernay. I expect him to still be on the field a lot, like, like he was last week, and that was no surprise. Um, we expected him to be sort of that, that, that third wide receiver, especially with Rashad Bateman and Miles Boykin being out right now. Um, so I expect a lot of the same stuff. Um, now, Lamar, hold on to that ball, man. And, and, and I, for Lamar... We just want him to, to play his game, too. We want him to be, be you. We know you can throw the ball. We saw it last week. We've seen it for the past couple of years. We know Lamar Jackson can throw that ball. That's old news. All these narratives that people continue to try to push, that's, that's been out the window for years. It's obvious Lamar Jackson can throw the ball. But do you. Do you. If you see it, take it. And that's whether it's throwing, that's whether it's running. If you see it, take it. Take it. Now, hopefully, going back to the offensive line, because last week there were a lack of deep shots last week. I think Lamar threw three. There was one to Duvernay uh, down the sideline that went out of bounds. There was one to Mark Andrews where it was slightly overthrown. And then there was the one to Sammy Watkins, which was a huge completion. Um, but we, we want to see more, more shots because that will back the defense up. That'll open up everything up underneath, too. So that's what we're hoping for this week. And that's for the offense. Special teams, continue to do what you do. You know, special teams is always very special for the Ravens. And that's always the, the one part of the team where you can just always count on them to be good. Um, Devin DuVernay, expect him to still remain a kick and punt return just to give them that possible big play. Uh, and, of course, Justin Tucker, Sam Cook. I mean, y'all yeah, already know what time it is with them. But defense. Woo-hoo, defense. All right, Wink. We all looking at you, my friend. 
We are all looking at you in high definition in 4K. Well, NFL with them 8K cameras, we will be looking at you very closely because with Wink, the lack of adjustments were frustrating too last week. Because, again, going back to Darren Waller, you know who he is. You knew who he was going into the game. And even if he was a brand new player that you had never heard of and he just started going off last week, all right, second half. Let's make some adjustments. Nope. He still continued to just dominate you. Their best player. And you found no way to take him out. Chiefs are a much harder opponent than the Raiders will be. Because they have a better quarterback. And that's no shot at Derek Carr. Derek Carr is still nice. He obviously showed us last week firsthand. But this is Patrick Mahomes now. This is Tyreek Hill now. This is like an, an, an upgraded version of what we saw last week. A quarterback that can move and is not afraid to try to deep passes. And a speedster at wide receiver who is always ready for a big play. But this is like an upgraded version of Ruggs. But a way upgraded version. This is Tyreek Hill. And then a tight end who is just a problem. A problem in Travis Kelce. So these Ravens, are, uh, they are really going to have to make adjustments, man. You, you got to have something ready for these guys. You have to. Now, we know Wink. Now, we can all sit up here and say, hey, we hope Wink doesn't blitz as much. We hope Wink maybe dials it back a little bit, try to just send four because it's Patrick Mahomes. But we all know Wink is uh, live by, die by. Live by, die by. Wink is somebody who, he stays true to his scheme. He stays true to himself. No matter who the opponent is, no matter who the quarterback is, no matter if it's working or not, Wink stays true to himself. And he will live by, die by the blitz. In my opinion, I'm not a coach. I'm not a professional. I'm just a fan who gives his honest opinion on the Ravens. In my opinion... All that blitzing and all that, ah, that's cool on a limited basis. It all, it all just depends. We can't just say, oh, Wink, don't go out there and blitz anybody. No, we can't say that. That To me, that would be ignorant. But we can say, watch. Watch for how it's working. Watch for how the Chiefs are adjusting to your blitz. Watch how they're picking it up. Watch who's getting home. Watch if anybody's getting home. And watch if you're leaving somebody one-on-one -on -one with no safety help. Especially all the speed that the Chiefs have. Especially that big playability that the Chiefs have. I would, I would dial it back with, uh, with Deshaun Elliott coming in there. I, I would just have him roaming the field, man. Honestly. Because, again, Chiefs are always looking for that big play. They're always looking for it. And even if it's not Deshaun Elliott, I, was, I would always have a safety back there. I would always have a safety back there. Because you just, oh man, it's it's just frustrating to think about, especially especially last game like when we played the Chiefs on Monday Night Football. Because I just keep thinking about that. I'm thinking about oh Marlon, Marlon Huff, our best cornerback, our best corner, our, oh, our best cornerback. We had our best cornerback, our best cover cornerback blitzing. Our best one. Oh my goodness, our best one. Our best corner was blitzing. And I know you want to switch it up and whatnot, but and you can get away with something like that, like in, in the Bengals game. In the Bengals game, Marlon Humphrey blitzed, Deshaun Elliott blitz. They were blitzing everybody that game. Everybody got a piece of Burrow that game. But that was the Bengals. You run that same stuff with the Chiefs. That's a much different team, different coaching, different experience. There's different levels to this, man. And the Chiefs are on a much different level than the Bengals are. So you just... I, I, I'm just frustrated thinking about it, man. Um, I, I do not think this game is going to go good for the Ravens. I, I hope they prove me wrong. I know there's been a lot of people that have said, oh, man, it would be so Raven if they went out there and lost to the Raiders like that. Then they came out and beat the Chiefs. And it would be, but I'm not expecting it. I, I'm expecting the score to be 31-20. to 20. Uh, Chiefs win. Um, again, I hope that I'm wrong. I really, I, I, I hope that I am wrong I hope that I'm wrong two weeks in a row. I didn't want to be wrong last week, but I ended up being big time wrong because I thought it was going to be 45-17 Ravens. But, yeah, we obviously it was a little different score. But 
I, I think it's going to be 31-20, uh, and it's going to go to the Chiefs. Um, I just, just from patterns, man, just from patterns of things that we've seen in the past from the Ravens when they go up against Kansas City, um, just from tendencies that we've seen in the past when the Ravens go against Kansas City, um, just from patterns that we saw literally not even just, not even with Kansas City, but with the Ravens last week against the Raiders and just the offensive line and just the lack of adjustments. I just they 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 have me not worried for the long term season, but just for this game, yeah, especially because it's the Chiefs, and it, it it always seems like like for the physical game for the Ravens last week it was rough enough. It, it was bad enough. The, 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 the lack of physicality from the offense and defensive line, uh, the allowing of the penetration from the offensive line and the lack of penetration from the defensive line, that, that it was a lack of physicality there. But what makes it more scarier for me is the mental part. When the mental part creeps in, oh, if, if you ain't got it mentally, you already lost. You already lost. But hopefully the Ravens can have it mentally. Hopefully they can also make some adjustments and, and can have it physically as well. Because with who they have, despite the injuries, despite the injuries, and there are a lot of injuries, a whole lot of injuries. Despite the injuries, Ravens have enough to get it done. They really do. They really do. But it's, it's just it's, it's so many different factors. Um, and we just... I don't know. This game, I, I don't think this game is, is the one for the Ravens. Again, I, I, hope, I really hope that I'm wrong. I really do. But right now, I, I just don't see it. But we still going to be there, of course, live streaming, cheering them on. Ho hopefully, hoping that they prove me all the way wrong. I would love to be wrong. Never, never had no problem admitting when I'm wrong. And if the Ravens prove me wrong on this, I would love if they do. But we'll see how it goes. Team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Yeah. Yeah.